scientists have determined how many tyrannosaurs could have lived on Earth. Tyrannosaurus is a species of dinosaur that is almost iconic in modern society. It can be said that most people will easily associate and recognize it. In total, about 1.7 billion of them may have lived on our planet, according to a new study. The existence of these powerful predators was put to an end only by the impact of a huge asteroid. Tyrannosaurus, Latin, Tyrannosaurus rex, is one of the most famous dinosaur species. This bipedal carnivore weighed up to 6 tons and could measure 13 meters from head to tail. It is one of the largest land predators known to us in history. Now, scientists from Germany have determined that in total, up to 1.7 billion of these creatures could have walked the Earth. Numerous data were taken into account in the research. From the average lifespan, to the time of reaching sexual maturity, to the number of tyrannosaur eggs that have survived as fossils. And while the figure of 1.7 billion may be impressive, it is still about 800 million less than the 2021 study estimated. The latest analysis is based on current information on the growth and reproduction of dinosaurs and seems to be more precise. The research results are published in the journal Paleontology. Evolutionist Eva Griebler of Johannes Gutenberg University Mainz points out that her model included data on generation duration, life expectancy and reproductive rates for tyrannosaurs. According to her, previous studies were definitely at odds with our current understanding of the biology of T. Rex and other theropods. The values of previous studies also did not agree with the calculations for large modern reptiles, birds and mammals, says Griebler. The researchers emphasize that we should not be too critical of previous estimates. They were the first of their kind and still contain a lot of valuable data. However, the current analyzers used updated models of tyrannosaur survival and maturity. New calculations suggest a lower survival rate for tyrannosaurs, and therefore fewer generations and fewer eggs. Scientists have a fair amount of data on these factors, based on detailed analyzes of fossils and comparisons with modern species that retained some features of dinosaurs. Griebler tested her model for estimating the abundance of tyrannosaurs on data from 23 existing species of reptiles, birds and mammals. It turned out to predict population size better than previous analyses. All this indicates that the model she proposed should also work in the case of tyrannosaurs. According to Griebler, her model which focuses on maximum lifespan, age of sexual maturation and maximum number of offspring per year, can help estimate the population size of other extinct species. Research also suggests that we have found a small percentage of tyrannosaur remains. Where are all the other bones? The answer to this question will be a big challenge for scientists in the future. The tumors have disappeared. The patients do not require further treatment. Success of experimental anti-cancer therapy. An experimental cancer therapy used in a small clinical trial involving a dozen patients with advanced rectal cancer resulted in complete remission of tumors in all study participants. The patients did not require further treatment and none of them experienced serious side effects of the therapy. This is the first trial of cancer therapy in which all participants went into remission and none needed further treatment. The patients were treated with a drug called Dostalamab, which is marketed under the name Gemperly. Last year, this agent was approved by the EMA, European Medicines Agency for use in the treatment of endometrial cancer. In a new study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, 
Scientists have proven that this agent is also effective against rectal cancer tumors. The research is in its early stages. But the results published by the team of scientists are unprecedented. According to them, dostalamab is surprisingly effective against rectal cancer. Remission of cancer was observed in all patients participating in the experimental therapy. It is worth noting that this group was relatively small, as it consisted of only 16 people. All study participants had tumors with the so-called mismatch repair deficient MMRD, seen in a subgroup of approximately 5 to 10% of patients with rectal cancer. This type of cancer occurs when the cell's DNA repair mechanisms weaken. Patients with such tumors are less sensitive to chemotherapy and radiotherapy. However, the mutations that cause these types of tumors, the researchers explain, make the disease more susceptible to the body's immune response, giving it a better chance of developing effective immunotherapy. When these mutations accumulate in a tumor, they stimulate the immune system, which attacks the mutated cancer cells, says Luis Diaz Jr. from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, MSK, one of the authors of the publication. We thought we'd use this as a first treatment option before the cancer metastasizes. Typically, Patients with these types of tumors can expect chemotherapy and radiation therapy before surgical removal of the tumor. Unfortunately, for many patients, this range of treatments can have long-term consequences. Standard treatment of rectal cancer with surgery, radiation and chemotherapy can be particularly challenging for people because of the location of the tumor says ISS oncologist Andrea Sercek, first author of the study. Patients can suffer from quality of life bowel and bladder dysfunctions, urinary incontinence, infertility, sexual dysfunction, and more. In the phase 2 study, patients were given dostalamab every three weeks for six months. The therapy was also to include standard procedures, i.e. radio and chemotherapy, and possible surgery in the event of tumor recurrence. However, the investigators did not decide on the next stages of therapy, because there was no need. Tumor remission was observed in all participants. As the authors of the study wrote in the publication, after six months of observation, 12 patients, four of whom are still under treatment, showed a complete clinical response. The researchers emphasized that they found no evidence of tumors and used magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, positron emission tomography, PET, imaging and endoscopy to look for them. About a year later, none of the patients required further treatment. Doctor. Sercek told me that a team of doctors examined my tests, and since they couldn't find any signs of cancer, they said there was no reason for me to have radiation, explains Sasha Roth, the first patient enrolled in the study. In total, 12 patients completed the experimental treatment. Participants were also followed up for a minimum of six months. About three-quarters of patients experienced mild or moderate side effects. Among these, participants reported rashes, fatigue, and nausea. Most importantly, none of the patients had a relapse. The results are encouraging. And while the sample size is too small to draw serious conclusions, they provide a compelling basis for much larger research in the future. Ultimately, the current study is expected to include approximately 30 patients. When data for the entire group are published, we will have a fuller picture of how safe and effective dodalumab is in patients with rectal cancer. Until then, we must treat the current results with both optimism and caution, 
says oncologist Hannah K. Sanoff of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, who wrote a commentary on the paper. The researcher added that, the results need to be replicated on a larger scale to be sure about the benefits of the drug. We also don't know if the results of this small study can be generalized to a wider population of rectal cancer patients, Sanoff said. Researchers are already investigating whether their immunotherapy could help patients with other tumors that have MMRD, such as certain types of stomach, prostate and pancreatic cancer. This is just the beginning and there's still a lot we don't know, but if further studies can replicate the results, we could be witnessing the development of a new type of anti-cancer therapy. This could be a revolutionary change in treatment, says Sanoff.